Hi everyone. In a previous video, I showed you how to get the predictions of a simple linear regression. And in this one, I'm going to do a similar thing, but with a multiple linear regression. For the demo, I'm using the popular Boston housing data set that goes back to about 1978. The variables, the Y variable, the response variable is the median property value in thousands of dollars. Then we have three predictors, number of rooms, per capita crime rate by town, and the index of accessibility to highways. Now the thing to see is of the three predictors, two of them are continuous and one of them is categorical, it's a factor. Now I know you might be thinking, well, number of rooms, that's integer, surely, one, two, three, four. Well, I kind of agree, but somehow, if we look at the Boston data set, it's, um, if we look at the values, they are, they are not rooms, look, they are not integer values. Anyway, never mind. Good news, guys, that the data set is in the package, so you don't need to ask me about how to get hold of the data. This Boston housing data is accessible from a mass package. So let's load it first. So I've already typed it in because this, this is like basic stuff, library mass. And then to call it, to load it, you run, you use the function data and then the name of the data set, which is Boston. So let's run these two. Okay, so you see in the global environment, it's loaded, 506 objects, 14 variables. Do the routine thing, see if it's loaded okay. Look at the head, which is the first six values, listings. Or we can alternatively use STI, to look at the structure of the data set to see what. And so using the structure gives us this, which we can see is 506 observations, 14 variables. Crime, that is a numerical. And here the first one, two, three, four, five values. We're also using room, and you can see there you go, same numerical. And the response, the price, well, that is numerical. And then I'm looking for rad. And you can see it's classified as integer. Let's look at it more. Let's look at the values it can actually take. So because it's got limited values, I'm using the value table. Boston is the name of the data set attribute I need to call it and we want to uh, run. All right, so you can see the values one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different values and those are the counts. Now these numbers itself, these are just the, the levels of the category or, or subgroups. Now these numbers itself don't actually mean, uh, mean um, doesn't have actually have a numerical meaning, right? They're indices. So it's not like two is bigger than twice the size of one. It's not like three. It's not like six is twice the size of three. Whatever these, these are coded to mean something. But we're not really bothered about that. We just want to know that, just note it, that it is a factor. All right, and that affects how we, how we run the regression. So guys, suppose after a lot of sweat, we have come up with a good model and say it has the three predictors. So let's fit it. All right, so let's fit multiple linear regression of price. Oh, sorry. So the name of the regression object, let's call M underscore model from for the Y variable. Uh, okay, and to use good practice here. And the name of the dependent variable, tilde, Okay, and then, now, this is a simple linear regression. This will be a regression of the price on rooms, but we want multiple, and we, to do that, we add together the predictor variables. Okay, and data is Boston. Now, before I press okay on this, note that at the moment, we noticed that rad is a factor, and because it's a factor, we need to write factor as, as factor here because we don't want to treat it as numbers. When we do that, it's going to create dummy variables for the levels of rad. Let's go to the next line. And because it's, because we've already kind of selected this model, I don't need to look at the summary. 
I just need to look at the coefficients. this regression object. Okay, so you can see here is the regression output. So that's the intercept, that's the coefficient on rooms, coefficient on crime. And notice the rad, although it looked like there was one thing there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice that the factor one has been omitted because that's the rule when we have factors. If you have k levels in a factor, you include the k minus one dummies, leaving the, the one left out being the baseline or the reference category. Uh, that's supposing we have the intercept in the model. All right, so we will use these coefficients later. All right, so the estimated parameter of Britain that, okay, we noted that rad one, level one has been omitted. It is the reference category. Right, write down the fitted model. So. Okay, here's a kind of a textbook exercise. So the predicted value of uh, this of the price then is equal to, and then how do you read this thing? That's intercept goes there. These are the coefficients. So for the room, it will be this here times room. So we write that. We don't need to write it times next to it. Minus that times crime and so on. You get the idea. So I've just got dot, dot, dot. Okay, so now onto the main thing for today, which is predictions. And predictions, there's two types in sample that's to obtain the predicted values given the X's in the data set, the predicted values in the data set. So let's do it manually and then let's show you how to actually do it properly doing, using the function. So manually, the first row, I'm telling you, has these values for our three predictors. And if we just look at the data set here, okay, you can pause the screen. This is the row we're looking at. So if we do it manually, going to look at the equations that we just written, wrote down here and we just compute. So now if you don't mind, I'm just going to do some copying and pasting here. When I did earlier, because this is tedious to write out. Right, so this is the intercept minus, get the minus, it doesn't matter the order guys, minus this times the crime rate, which is that value there plus this times room, so that's coefficient times room value, the room value is that, okay? And then plus, now why did I write zero times eight? Well, because if you are level one of rad, then each of these, let's, this is a dummy variable. Each of these guys are dummy variable. So specifically, if, if we're looking at rad two, this here, means it's a binary variable, taking the value one if the observation is from level two of rad, zero otherwise. So we are rad level one. So what will, therefore, what will this value take? It'll take zero because we are not level two, we are level one. So this will be zero times that, which is zero. And then a similar story for all the other ones. And you see that I've one, two, three, so there's eight of them, I'm clear, and so there you go, zero times eight. You don't have to write that, I've just done that so you can see. So running that, we get the predicted value, 24.52, um, right under here, 24.52, remember this is in thousands of dollars, guys, always remember, don't just write 24.5 and that's it. So it's 24.527, uh, if you like, thousands of US dollars is this property price median value of the property price given those predictors. Okay, well, that's just to show you how to do it so that you understand what this regression is, but actually this would be too tedious to do line by line for each of our observations. So I've done it for the first row. Now I want to do it for every single other 506 of the row. So we use the function fitted dot values with the regression object gives us the fitted values. And if we just look at the first five of them, these are the first, well, sorry, first six of them. You see the first one, that is what we've computed, that is what we have. So basically, yeah, they should be the same, it's just that I've just, round, I just rounded some things earlier. All right, so this is fitted dot values gives you in sample predictions. 
Okay, out of sample. So if we have a new observation, a new set of predictors, and we opt want to obtain a prediction, now we use a different function, it's the predict function. So say I want to know the price when, that, when I have these values. Okay, so what we do is the predict function, and then the arguments are, first of all, you have the regression object, then we need to feed it the x values. So to do that, it's got to all be in a, in a table, so data.frame, and then we type in the predictors. So there you go, the values. Thing to note here, one, order of these guys don't matter. I've got to put crim in the middle and then rad over there. Doesn't matter a bit. Note that for the rad equals to five, it's the level five. Okay, well, it's a, it's a level labeled five, sorry. It's a level labeled five. It doesn't mean five numerically. So we put it in quotes. All right, so there's the value. <clears throat> so importantly, when I say rad five, if I go back to the output here, it does not mean five times uh, this value, okay? It just means one times this value. Okay, so that's for a single observation, that's all, all, all good, but usually we want more, we want several. So let's give you an example. I want two predictions for these, for given two sets of uh, predictors. Uh, in this case, guys, we need to feed it in, uh, but we need to align them in a vector. So it's the same kind of thing, but instead of putting data frame straight into predict this time, I just want to separate it out so it's easy to read. That's why I've done it on two lines and you see people usually do that. So the first line, I'm just calling it new X, because that's my new X variables. Data frame again. And now the thing to note here is you need to put uh, into a vector. So C here and then here and they have to be aligned. So first, second observation, rad five and 24, first and second, that and that. I know you see that these values are the same, but you'll see why in a moment. Okay, and once we run that, then we can plug that into here to predict. And we'll have two new predictions. Now, guys, if you compute the difference of these two, well, what is it? Well, it's, a, it's around four point something, isn't it, yeah? Four point uh, four ish. Uh, well, if we go up here, I want to note that these two are the same. They're, everything is the same between the two observations, just rad five versus rad 24. Sorry, I want to go up here. Rad five, and rad 24. So the difference is a four point something. I'm just saying that basically I could have told you that just by looking at here, because what you're going to do is add this to that. We'll give you that. So in other words, this here plus that gives you the difference between the rad five and rad 24 given crime and room are fixed at the same value. Okay. All right. Now, I think this is the most interesting thing of today is how do you use your predictions? Well, let's, ha ask, let, let's, let me ask you this. Use your model to identify with a property with these characteristics and that is on the market for $30,000. Is it fairly priced? All right, so we put the x values, all right, okay, into there, and then we predict. All right, so it comes out to 22.13, uh, okay, K US dollars. So it's bill, so what do you think? This value is below what it is on the market. So the, our model says, given these characteristics, it should be, you know, it predicts that that's the price but you you observe in the market a much higher price so therefore what do you think you would think it is that this here on the market is too expensive right okay well i would understand you saying that but you have to be very careful when you do the predictions the thing about predictions is that they are you have to take account of their uncertainty because it's only from you know a sample of data here 
So what we have to do is take account of the uncertainty of the prediction. How you do that, guys, is the, either the prediction interval or the confidence interval of the mean of the uh, price. So how do you do that? Well, let me show you. So what we want is similar for a simple linear regression model. This interval equals, and then we want to tell it prediction. And by default, by default, it is uh, at the twenty. Uh, sorry, at the ninety-five percent significance level. But I just want to put this in anyway, so because you can change this. So when you get a prediction, guys, always look at either the prediction interval or the confidence interval. Uh, I'll say more just in a moment. So here's the prediction interval. So it gives you the. Fit. I'll interpret that in a moment. No, I'll interpret it now. So the prediction tells you the fitted value given these, uh, this scenario. That's the predicted price. Okay, that's the predicted price. But in the 95% prediction interval says that that is the lower value, thousands of dollars, and that's the upper value, thousands of dollars. So you can think of it, you know, there's a 95%, if, if, at the 95% level, anywhere between there would be okay. Now, 36 is outside here, at the upper range. That means it lies outside the band, and that suggests it is overpriced. If this here was below 10.15, that would suggest it's underpriced. Notice that this figure here, 22, is midway between these two of the way it's calculated. Now let's do the, because it's an, if you've understood that, that's fine then. We now just do the confidence interval. I mean, the conf yeah, confidence. Just to perhaps compare them. All right. So this guy here, can you see, it gives you the same fitted value, but the interval is narrower there's less uncertainty. And that makes sense because the confidence here concerns, let me just write something if I can. Can I write something? This here concerns the mean. So this is the expectation or the mean of the Y variable. This is what you're looking at, mean, Y the prediction. Whereas this guy here, up here, is looking at the interval for the raw prediction. Okay, that's the difference. So which one do you use? Well, if you are, you know, if you are going to buy, if you're looking at to buy a house, which has these uh, characteristics, a one house, then the prediction interval makes more sense than the confidence. On the other hand, if you're a company and you're looking to buy, acquire several properties with uh, this scenario, with, this, with, that, uh, with these set of predictors, then you are, will be more interested in the mean value of those values. So then you'd be more interested in the confidence of the prediction. Okay, so main message takeaway here is whether it's simple or multiple, and type of regression, if you're doing a prediction, always uh, always also look at either the prediction interval or confidence interval for the mean of your predictor. Okay guys, so hope that's been helpful. See you next time.